Midwest. Sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Wow, another windy day. Look at the wind gusts still here at the 5 o'clock hour. Gusting to 33 miles an hour in Springfield. 30 in Decatur, 29 in Champaign. And these winds are going to continue through tonight and into the day tomorrow as well. 57 Champaign, Decatur, and Taylorville. But obviously with that wind, it feels probably quite a bit cooler than that. They've had plenty of sunshine mixed in with a few clouds, but nothing that really hindered that sunshine at all. As we go throughout tonight, it is going to cool down. There's our Neal Street camera live here as people make their way home from work. It's going to get chilly. We'll talk about just how low that temperature goes by tomorrow morning coming up. WCA3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. Teachers have a motivation to stay in this town. That's the goal for one teachers union. How an overnight agreement could put a stop to a strike. Plus, a woman with ties to central Illinois is facing new charges in the college admissions scandal, which she and other parents are accused of now. So as soon as we found out about it, we removed him, made sure he can no longer he can no longer be involved in any scouting activities. A man served as a Boy Scout leader in central Illinois for decades. Now he's behind bars, accused of having child pornography. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. The community's been under stress. The students have been under stress. Um, both groups have been under stress. And ultimately, we found a way to work together. The Blue Ridge School District and Teachers Union found common ground days before a strike was scheduled. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. The union was set to hit the picket line by Monday if they couldn't reach a deal. WCI3's Jen Lask was there overnight as leaders from both sides walked out together to announce they signed off on an agreement. She shows us what's next. Just before 1 o'clock Tuesday morning, Union President Don Anton and School Board President Dale Schneeman said they signed a tentative agreement. This deal ending weeks of negotiations days before the strike deadline of October 28th. The community's been under stress, the students have been under stress, um, both groups have been under stress, and ultimately we found a way to work together. The biggest focus of these negotiations has been teacher salaries. The union blames low salaries for high teacher turnover. It's hard not to want to compare us to uh, other districts surrounding us, but also like districts comparable to us. Uh, so we feel that the, the offer that we have agreed on tonight is, is very beneficial to all parties involved. But Anton and Schneeman say they found common ground. It's not a done deal yet, though. Both sides have to ratify the agreement. Some of the parents I spoke to say they're cautiously optimistic that they'll be back here on Monday dropping their kids off for school. I'm hoping that it's a fair deal for everyone. I think it's important that the teachers have a motivation to stay in this town. Lenora Raboyne's granddaughter goes to Ruth Schneider Elementary School. I think a school is the heart of any town. And once that school goes away, the town dies. And I don't want to see that happen. Another parent, Jennifer Meyer, has two kids in the district. Her oldest has autism. Without their help, we don't know what we would have done or which way to go or guide us in that, you know, in those certain situations. So. Meyer says she hopes this deal means the board is showing support for the teachers who have shown her family the same every day. In Farmer City, Jen Lask, WCIA 3, your local news leader. The union is expected to vote on ratification this Sunday. The school board will have to call a special meeting. It hasn't announced that date yet. Now, teachers in Springfield are still working to get on the same page as their district. Yeah, the teachers union got its first look at a contract proposal last night. Members were overwhelmingly unsatisfied with the plan. WCIA 3's Gabrielle Franklin joins us live from our Capitol Newsroom tonight. Gabrielle, what are members asking for there? Paul, Springfield teachers say they want better pay, smaller class sizes, and safer spaces to teach in. Teachers with the Springfield Education Association have been working without a contract since mid-August. So when they finally saw a financial offer from the district last night, their anticipation quickly turned into disappointment. Around 600 members of the association were in attendance, and 90% of those members say they felt the deal was unfair and unequitable. Springfield Education Association leader Aaron Graves says the teachers want the district to go back to the drawing board. 
in the end, it's, it, is, it is disappointing. Um, over the last 10 years, our membership feels that they've helped to balance the budget for the school district, and it's been uh, balanced on the backs of our members. Teachers here say they are watching the moves of other teachers' unions, like the teachers in Chicago. But unlike those educators in Chicago, teachers here say that striking is their last resort, and they don't want to go down that road unless they absolutely have to. Paul? All right, Gabrielle, thanks for that update. A champagne man who police say has a long history with the Boy Scouts was arrested for child pornography. Police say 79-year-old Milton Forsberg uploaded pictures of underage boys last year. Last month, the Boy Scouts of America notified authorities at least one man says Forsberg abused him when he was 13 years old. Police say a search of Forsberg's house revealed more pornographic pictures of underage boys and a dark room with photographs he took of young girls. His home is on West Charles Street in Champaign. He was arrested last week. The CEO of the area's Boy Scout Council says he was troubled by the news, but says Forsberg hasn't been directly involved with them for almost 30 years. Scouting is still safe. Scouting is still a very good organization for your son or your daughter. Um, we do our best to be able to make sure that our kids are safe. That's why we have our youth protection policies in place. That's why we do the background checks. The troop Forsberg used to lead was disbanded in the 90s. A federal judge ordered him to be held until his trial. And coming up tonight at 6, we'll tell you about another group he was involved with. Well, we have an update on a national case. More charges have been filed in the college admissions scandal, and they're impacting a woman with ties to central Illinois. Elizabeth Meyer Kimmel is among 11 parents now facing bribery charges. They're accused of paying an admissions consultant to rig their children's test scores and bribing coaches at sought after schools. Kimmel resigned from the board of directors at Busey shortly after the scandal broke. The new charges accuse the parents of bribing employees at the University of Southern California to designate their children as athletic recruits or as members of other favored admissions categories. The parents could face up to 10 years in prison for the bribery charges. For more information on these charges and how that bribery scheme worked, head to our website, WCIA.com. Two groups in central Illinois that help protect women got money from a federal grant. Now they need the Senate to act so they can keep doing that work. The Illinois Coalition Against Domestic Violence and Illinois Coalition Against Sexual Assault got more than half a million dollars from the Violence Against Women Act. The money comes from a temporary expansion of the program, but that expansion expired in February. The U.S. House passed a measure that would reauthorize funding until 2024. It's up to the Senate to follow through. We really need for that to happen because we need that bill to pass and to be signed by the president in order to um, continue to provide these services for victims across the entire country and in tribal communities as well. Congressman John Shimkus and Darren LaHood were the only members of the Illinois delegation to vote against the measure in April. One county is short on money. What's being done to avoid layoffs and salary cuts? Plus, a long wait for money in one village is paying off. Why Rantoul has been waiting five years for the nearly million dollars to come through.